Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman and we're taking a look today at another low-cost laptop, this one from Acer that uh, looks like it might be a pretty good deal. This is their Swift One and it's a 13.3 inch device with an IPS display. You get a nice high quality matte display here, uh, much nicer than we typically see at this price point. And we're going to be putting this thing through its paces very shortly. But I do want to mention in the interest of full disclosure, this is on loan from Acer. So when we're done with this, it goes back to them. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Nobody is paying for this review and no one is reviewing this content before it is posted. Let's take a closer look now at the hardware. $359 as configured right now, which is a very good price. There's probably a few other configurations out there that might cost a little more. 13.3 inch IPS display, uh, which is significant because most of these low cost laptops use lower quality TN displays. So you will get better viewing angles, much sharper color on it. It's not as bright as I would like it to be, but uh, in a uh, moderately lit room, it should be uh, just fine. Under studio lights here, it's looking a little dimmer than uh, it might otherwise, but generally a pretty nice display here, especially if you looked at other low-cost laptops and put them side by side, this is a lot better. Uh, part of why IPS is so important is that it has more flexibility in the viewing angles. So if you go back to uh, some of the other low-cost laptops we reviewed over the last couple of weeks, uh, you'll see that the second the display starts to go off center, you'll lose a lot of the image quality. Uh, here you really don't. You've got a decent image no matter which way you look at the screen, which is a really nice feature. Also nice here is that the display runs flat to your desk here as well. So really good display, nice to get 1080p packed into a 13-inch panel like this, and uh, probably the best display you'll see for under $400 at the moment. Uh, all metal design on this one too, so it's got a nice build quality to it overall. Uh, fairly lightweight, 2.87 pounds or 1.3 kilograms, so it's a nice little laptop to walk around with. It doesn't have any fans built in because it's got the Intel N4200 Pentium chip built in. That is a quad-core processor. It is on the uh, lower end of the scale of processors Intel makes, so it's not going to compete against some of the more expensive laptops out there, but uh, it should hold its own against other lower-cost devices, especially ones from last year. Uh, this chip is a pretty big improvement, especially for video watching, which will look uh, great on the display here. Four gigabytes of DDR3 RAM and 64 gigabytes of storage built in. On the battery life standpoint, they're advertising about 10 hours. Uh, in our testing, we're seeing about six to seven doing some basic tasks. We run the uh, PC Mark battery benchmark test, which kind of replicates a uh, work day where you're doing word processing and Excel and that sort of thing. So we're not getting the 10 hours they are uh, marketing on this one, but uh, six to seven hours really isn't so bad for a computer uh, that comes in around this price point. It has AC wireless built Built in and it has a two by two radio so it's a little faster than some of the other uh, AC wireless uh, radios we're seeing on other low-cost laptops here so all in a pretty nice little browsing device as you'll see in a few minutes let's take a look at ports now you've got a Kensington lock here for locking it down on your desk a USB 2.0 port on this side and you've got an SD card reader over here uh, the cards do stick out though so just bear that in mind you won't be able to walk around with storage too easily attached to it on the other side you got some more ports we got the power adapter that goes in here, HDMI out here for connecting an external display. You have two USB 3.0 ports here, which are faster than the USB port on the other side. So I think if you're connecting hard drives and things that require a lot of bandwidth, uh, plug them in here uh, versus the other side. You've got USB type C right here, which also runs at the same speed as these two ports do, but this does not do power or data. So if you're connecting a dock, all it will do is bring the data functions over, uh, not display and not power and you've got a headphone microphone jack over there. My only real gripe on this one is the keyboard. The keys are smaller than full size and they are spaced far apart and I've had a hard time getting used to the keyboard on this. Uh, Corey who helps me out here in the studio had a similar uh, remark on the keyboard. Uh, the travel isn't all that great on it either uh, but the trackpad is good and what I'll show you here there's a little feature built into it to allow us to use our fingerprint uh, to unlock the computer as well uh, via the fingerprint reader here. So I can lock the computer and then just put my fingerprint in there to unlock it. And again, the trackpad really does uh, feel pretty nice and responsive and I am uh, pleased with that. So really the only gripe on this front is the keyboard. But let's see now how it performs. We're gonna look at some web browsing, some office documents and a few games as well. Let's take a look. So let's kick things off with my YouTube channel and a video running at 1080p at 60 frames per second. No issues, no drop frames watching that video with the Edge browser on here, which is what I recommend for uh, low cost PCs and video watching, especially on YouTube. Everything seems to be uh, looking just fine. Uh, we also ran 
some web browsing tests and went over to nasa.gov to look at a multimedia rich website uh, that also loaded up very quickly thanks in part to the processor but also to uh, the faster wireless that's built into this. And on the browserbench.org speedometer test we got a score of 40.2 which puts it right within the margin of error compared to the Asus Vivo book we looked at recently with the same processor. So uh, good performance where we would expect it to be on a computer at this price point. A very nice little web browsing device especially if you're just doing Google Docs and uh, some Netflix and YouTube and those sorts of things. And we also ran Microsoft Word on the device and found that it worked quite well for uh, doing some desktop publishing and other things. So productivity applications, while they won't be blazingly fast, will uh, certainly be adequate for most tasks. So let's move on to gaming. And uh, these computers, as I always like to remind people, are not gaming devices per se, but they can run a lot of casual games. And we uh, checked out Minecraft first. This is the uh, Java version of Minecraft, the one that most people still run. Uh, there we got frame rates around anywhere from 12 to 30 frames per second. So generally playable, but again, not as playable as it might be on a higher end computer. And this was something that we started to notice that was differing from uh, the Asus with the same processor. The graphics performance on this one feels a little slower than what we saw on the Asus. However, the Asus kept crashing the more we were pushing it. So I think they made some uh, decisions to maybe throttle the processor a little bit here to prevent it from overheating. So that might explain uh, some of the uh, performance being a little off on some of these games. We also ran Half-Life, which is an older game, but it does run very nicely on this hardware and it does seem to run nicely here. Uh, we were seeing frame rates between 35 and 50, sometimes 60 frames per second. Again, a little, little slower than what we saw on the uh, Asus Vivo book, but again, we're not seeing the crashing on this one that uh, we did see on the ASUS. And on the 3D Mark CloudGate test, we got a score of 2,530, and that compares to 3,789 that we got on that ASUS Vivo book. So you can see there is a bit of a difference here in overall uh, gaming performance, at least on that benchmark. We're seeing a few frames per second less on both of the uh, graphics tests as well as a frame off on the CPU test also. And I have a feeling, again, this is probably due to trying to balance the uh, performance performance with the heat that might get generated when you do uh, start pushing the processor on this thing. We also ran the 3D Mark stress test and that one came in at 93%. Uh, so that is not a passing score on that test, which does mean that it will uh, throttle some more perhaps as it heats up. But again, we were seeing much better stability with games on this one than we did on the Asus. And just like the other Apollo Lake computers we've looked at, Ubuntu seems to boot up just fine. Wi-Fi, audio, video, Bluetooth, everything seems to work uh, just as you would expect it to on here and was auto detected on boot. And one last thing to check out and that is how well it handles high-end video. We've got a 4K file encoded in HEVC compression running at 140 megabits per second at 10 bits. That usually chokes a lot of low-end hardware, not here. It's running at a very smooth frame rate, very responsive, and uh, we were quite pleased with what we saw out of this, especially because the ASUS would occasionally get some skip frames into the mix. Uh, this one seems to be a lot more stable uh, playing back that high-end video. So good stuff on here and another example of how Intel has been improving video performance on these low-end chips. And when you're watching those movies on here, you'll be hearing sound out of these speakers located at the bottom of the device. Not the best sound quality. It's a little tinny, but uh, plug in a pair of headphones and you'll have a much better movie watching experience. And visually, you're going to get a very nice experience here because this really has a beautiful display for the price point. Very minimal bleed through on it also. That was one area that uh, we've seen sometimes with these IPS displays, especially low cost ones. You get uh, some light bleeding in on the side sides of the display. Uh, we're not seeing that here with this one. It really is a really nice display for the price. So all in a great value here. Uh, my only gripe is the keyboard, but uh, the rest of it I think is okay given what we're paying and again given what we're uh, seeing for a display on this. So this is a, a very nice low-end laptop that I can recommend. Not the best for gaming, but a few of these things are, but it does look like it is more stable uh, based on some of the trade-offs they made on the graphics performance. But again, something I think I can be very comfortable recommending to you. This is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by my Patreon supporters, including Gold Level supporters, the Black Eyed and Blues Music Hour podcast, Chris Allegretta, John Prawl, William Miller, and Charlie Walden. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month.
Head over to lon.tv slash Patreon to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.